Alright, welcome to this video. This is going to be a little overview and review of the Woodbridge Air and Whirlpool water jetted bathtub. This is the part number right here. I noticed there wasn't a whole lot of, or really any videos online of actual real reviews for this product. So, right off the rip, I'll say that this was not given to me or any money taken off to do this review. I bought this with my own money and it was just delivered today via Amazon scheduled delivery. It's like their own little truck freight service they have. So it just came off the truck. I'll open it up here. I already cut the seal just to make sure there was no obvious visible damage. Okay, so this is like the 71 inch model. It has the air jets and water jets. Uh, it comes with this drain connection here, which I will not be using. Um, I Just from reading the reviews, you can tell that this connection is more for the unskilled DIYer, I guess. I mean, you really want to make a proper drain connection. So we won't be using that, but I'm going to get this unpackaged and we will set it in place. We're renovating our bathroom right now. So I'd like to get it installed as soon as possible to make sure everything works all right and get it plumbed up. And I'll show you that process as we go. connection here for your drain and it's all connected and then there are two cords that have to be plugged in and it does require two separate dedicated GFCI circuits so that is one thing to consider you have to you cannot share a circuit they say two 15 amp circuits I have two 20 amp circuits since the bathroom so that's something to keep in mind all right so Got it set in here, the new bathroom. And getting it in here wasn't difficult. It's just, you need to check your dimensions and the dimensions of your door. The bathtub is actually wider this way than it is taller this way. So we had to turn it sideways to get through the doorway. So just keep that in mind, depending on where you're putting it. Definitely want to measure first. I'd measure before you even order it just to make sure you can even get it in your bathroom. But it's no bigger than, you know, a standard larger bathtub. So now I just need to decide how I want to orient it since it's a freestanding bath with a freestanding faucet. We can pretty much put it wherever we want, wherever it looks good. Just to make sure, because we'll have to cut a hole in the floor to the basement to access the plumbing and the wiring. So keep that in mind, you know, wherever you put it, make sure there isn't like a stud right in the way, a drain or something else like that below. If you're having a professional plumber do it, you don't need to worry about that, but that's just something you gotta keep in mind when you're planning on where you wanna put this. All right, so we've got the tub installed. Still got the plastic on it. Uh, there's rubber feet, four rubber feet on, it looks like an aluminum frame underneath that holds it up. And this is all fiberglass, but it doesn't really sit on the side here. It sits on those rubber feet, but the way it was set up from the factory, there was a gap under here. It doesn't obviously look right, so I had to raise the feet up. And then what I did, because this is pretty light, and the problem is there's no real way to hook it to the floor. And you don't want it just to be attached by your plumbing. So what I ended up doing is putting silicone all around the base and basically I glued the tub to the floor so that way if you bump into it when it doesn't have water in it it won't move or whatever um, I got rid of that 
crappy plastic drain that I showed you that it came with. I would not use that. It's just asking for a problem. It just uses a standard one and a half inch threaded connection to the drain on the bottom. And you can then adapt that to whatever your plumbing is on the floor, whether it's two inch or one and a half inch. They recommend running it into a two inch line, even though it's only one and a half inch outlet. So this is what the instructions say. And I went with this faucet here. And this actually, these faucets can cost as much as the tub, depending on what brand you get. So I did go with a uh, brand on Amazon, and I'll leave a link in the description for it. It is more expensive. You can find these for as cheap as $150. You can get the Woodbridge one, it's more like $200. The one I got was about $300. But it has half inch lines and flows a ton more. The big problem, and this isn't really a review of the faucet, but the big problem that a lot of people seem to have with these is they flow so slowly that when you go to fill the tub, it takes forever and it's more like a sink faucet. So I wanted to make sure I got one that has a really high flow. So it's supposed to flow around 11 gallons a minute and has half inch lines and it's really nice construction. The chrome is very nice on it. Uh, even though it's mounted solid to the floor, there's just a little bit of a wiggle on it, which it feels solid, but there's a little wiggle and that's in the pipe. It's not in the base, so it is what it is. But it comes with a detachable shower wand and such. I'll show you that in a minute here. But anyway, we got it hooked up. Uh, PVC is drying in the basement. It'll be time to try it out and see how it works here in just a minute. All right, so I have the moment we've been waiting for. Let's see if the water turns on first. Well, that's a good sign, so we're going to push the drain. And we're going to let this fill up just with cold water so we can run the jets and the air bath, make sure everything works, make sure there's no leaks. Definitely want to check for leaks once everything's full. You want to fill the water above the level of all the holes. And then we'll try it out. Okay, so we've got it filled up. Now it's time to test it out. First we'll try the air bath, which is this button right here. It just turns on air jets only. Definitely got a lot of force. As you can see. air bath part and we'll now we'll turn on just the water jets and the water jets are four there and then two there and two there and when you turn on the water jets there's a light LED light that's in the tub that changes colors and you have no control over that it does its own thing so hopefully you like light in your bath water I think it's kind of neat and then, obviously, you can turn on both systems at the same time, which is why you need two separate circuits. There's definitely a lot of turbulence in that water, so it should be pretty comfortable. So we're going to let this run for a few minutes, make sure there's no leaks, make sure everything works good. And then we'll have to try it out. Alright, so what do I say about it? Well. I've used it for a while now. It works good, but there's a few things you need to keep in mind. First of all, the size. So while it's, it is 71 or 72 inches long, that is the exterior dimensions. The interior dimensions are actually a lot smaller and it's kind of deceiving because it looks very large, but you have to remember they had to fit a pump over here and a pump over here in between the inner and the outer wall. So it does take up quite a bit of space. So I'm 5'11", weigh around 180 pounds. 
and in the tub, obviously my feet can't be straight out. They have to be bent, my knees have to be bent a little bit. And if you're kind of wide in the shoulders, or anywhere for that matter, you might not fit sideways in the tub. It is kind of tight. My shoulders were touching both sides, so just keep that in mind. Another thing, the jets. So the Whirlpool jets, you can see right there and there, they're actually smaller in size than uh, other Whirlpool tubs that I've seen before. And the thing about that is it makes the water come out a lot harder and in a more pinpoint area. So you can adjust a little bit up and down and side to side the jets, but I found the water was really pushing into one spot on my side, either which way you sit in the tub. And it was kind of annoying. I did get used to it pretty quick, but it's just something to note. It's a little different. Uh, the, air, the air bath part of it, it is very strong. I'll say that. And it's almost like you're sitting in a boiling pot of soup. And water does splash. So even when you're in there, if you're not covering all the jets, there's a lot of water splashing around outside of the tub. Those might be a little too strong. If I had anything. I guess it's worse than not being strong enough, but it's just something you got to make sure the water level definitely isn't too full. There really is no manual for this tub that you can find online, or at least that I could find, and it doesn't come with a user manual, it just comes with a little tiny installation guide. So I'll just explain. Obviously, this turns on the air bath, this control here turns on the jets. The middle one that adjusts the amount of air that gets mixed in with the water in the jets. So when this is on, if I turn it to the right, it turns down the air. If I turn it to the left, it adds air. And you'll, you'll feel the difference when you're in the tub. The jets themselves, like I said, they work good. You definitely feel it. Those, those side jets were just a little annoying. One other thing while I'm picking on it, that right there is the drain, where it, the suction port, where it pulls the water into the jet or to be recirculated through the tub. Most tubs nowadays have two of those. That way if one gets blocked, the other one will let water flow. So, if you stick a body part, an arm, a leg, stomach, whatever, against that and block that port, it will suck your skin right in and against it and it will turn off all the water supply. And obviously you need to pull yourself off of it or shut the jet off. So they probably should have two of those. I'm not sure why it only has one. That could be an issue, especially I would not let a child be unsupervised in the tub just because I've heard horror stories about something like that. It's not like it's that strong, but I'm an adult. A child might be a different story, so it's something to keep in mind. Could be a little bit of a safety concern, possibly. Here's the best part. So hopefully you like the colors because there's no way to turn the light off and there's no way to change the color. It just randomly cycles through the color and the light is connected to the motor of the pump for the Whirlpool. So if you turn off the Whirlpool and you just turn on the air bath, no light. So I guess it would have been neat if there was some way to control that. When you're installing it, if you really don't want the light, you can unplug it underneath and disable it. But once the tub is installed, it is what it is. Okay, so what's my overall assessment after using it for a while, after installing it? For the money, I say I'll give it a four out of five stars. 
for sure. The combination with the faucet and the tub, you're looking at about $1,700. It would be hard to find anything comparable in a big box store in that price range. The faucet alone would cost you $1,000 or more. So keep that in mind. It is very nice for what it is. It seems to be very well made. It's so far working out really good. There's just a few little quirks that I pointed out and I'm being picky. I really am. And hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, be sure to like it. Be sure to subscribe and leave a comment if you have a question. Maybe there's something I can answer that I didn't answer in the video if you're considering this tub. All right, we'll take care. We'll see you next time.